My name is Manuel Delgado, and I'm a third-generation Old World Luthier. I've learned the traditional craft of building guitars and string instruments from my father, grandfather, and great-uncle. Our business was started in Mexico in 1928 and moved to the U.S. in the 40s. Our clients range from Andres Segovia to Los Lobos. I live in Nashville, Tennessee with my wife Julie and our beautiful little girl. I continue to build using the traditional methods taught to me by my family. If the power went out in my shop, I could still build you a guitar. I put my passion for life into every instrument I build, and I feel a bond with the craftsmen and artists who make instruments and music. The longer I've lived, the more I've come to know every instrument has a story. Well, at least the good ones, the ones that are made with care, the ones that stand the test of time. They start off clean and pristine, but just like people, they get deeper as they get older. They journey hand to hand, sometimes generation to generation. They might develop cracks and nicks. They might even need repairs, but that's what gives them character. That's what gives them their precious sound. You know, there's a reason why bluegrass players love acoustic guitars from the 1930s why a symphony player will pay hundreds of thousands of dollars for a violin from the 17th century. Most handmade instruments end up in the homes of dedicated musicians. Some end up in the hands of collectors. But right now we're going to meet someone who's both. He's Doug Green, better known as Ranger Doug, the idol of American youth. <laughs> He's the lead singer of Riders in the Sky, probably the best known cowboy band on earth. They're members of the Grand Ole Opry, they've won a Grammy, they've had music in movies. But before Doug started the band, he was a music historian. And now that he can afford it, he collects the instruments that he's passionate about. The amazing archtop jazz guitars known as Stromberg's. It's so balanced too. That's that's you know? the beauty of it. It's like it yeah, really it's like is. you were commenting on the other guitar. It's the same thing where you, you, you know, as you're playing that, I can kind of imagine uh, the orchestra as they're lined <laughs> yeah. up and you know just the, the the thin railing kind of dividing them from the dance floor <laughs> and, and and the music projecting and, and this is an instrument that would have to compete with with brass with with percussion instruments with uh, mm -hmm. with keys. Serious swing players. I mean, of course, they're all into well, what's it worth? You know? Right. <laughs> because they are valuable and and they're very rare. But uh, people who really you know understand what the tone's supposed to be about just uh, just love it. I guess as a builder, what I would want to know is why is it that you you're uh, comfortable with taking these out and playing them as opposed to just putting them in a case somewhere and for and kind of having them for visual candy. They're very pretty. <laughs> But I think, as you said, there's, it's a tribute to the builder, and it's, it's what Elmer Stromberg wanted. He wanted these guitars to be played, and uh, I don't know how many years I have left in this business. I'm going to enjoy every minute of it, and on stage, that means playing my Stromberg. That's, that's what I'm going to do. I actually just recently uh, acquired a guitar that my father made in 1974, a gentleman in North Carolina, uh -huh. and he sent it to me, and he said, you know, it needs some repair work. I'd be happy to pay you to repair it. However, I feel like you should have it. Oh. So if you're interested, I'd, I'd be interested in selling it to you. Mm -hmm. So, and you know, I said, well, I don't, I already have so many of them. I took it out of the case and I played it. I'm like, okay, I'll figure out a way. I'm going to, I'm going to keep this guitar. <laughs> oh, <yes. laughs> I don't know if people who don't get uh, really sentimentally attached to their instruments can understand how that feels, mm -hmm. but I know exactly what you're saying. It's, you, you just, uh, you bond with them in a very emotional way that you wouldn't think you could with a piece of uh, wood and metal, but you do. You yeah. do. They really, they, they mean something to you emotionally. There's a growing concern over people who purchase musical instruments as investments. They're putting guitars, mandolins, cellos, violins out of the reach of people who actually want to play them and enjoy them. Instruments were not meant to be put in cases or vaults to be viewed, they were meant to be played. That's why it's inspiring to meet someone like Ranger Doug. I'm Manuel Delgado and I hope to be able to bring you more stories of handmade music.